They asked me for a commercial song. This is 1977, 78. And because I had to come up with something that was going to get played on the radio. So I wrote ZX Dan. So ZX Dan obviously was aimed at being a hit immediately. And it worked instantly. We were lucky enough to get a recording contract, which was like sensational news for Springs. Springs had a brilliant newspaper, the Springs and Brackpan Advertiser, and it's like very old. I mean, if they came to your gig, they took photographs. So it was like Springs had its own new musical express. Your gig would be on the same page as like a dog show or something, you know, but there'd be a photograph of, you know, you playing the guitar. Then Radio Rats kind of fizzled out because basically Leonard had disappeared because he had been called up to the army or he was trying to avoid being called up. So we had drummer problems. We start off this evening with a band from the East Rand. They call themselves the Radio Rats. Remember ZX Dan? This one's called Irade. So we really tried to be punk, and I mean, you've seen some photos of the you know, makeup and everything. We, we went the whole hog. We'd have kind of a ratty image and everything, and a punk this and a punk that, but basically, the songs were essentially, in a way, pop. Because we weren't that good, we played our own stuff, and then nobody knew whether it was being played badly or not. This is like mid-80s. Very dark period in South Africa, hey? It was a scary time. You didn't know what was going to happen to South Africa. Well, I'm happy we all waited. Many times have we seen... Anything that comes from overseas, we embrace. But things that come from here, which is, which is the stuff that is ours, we don't really care for. James was this, like, very, very enthusiastic school kid when I first saw him in Springs. We were playing at the Methodist Church uh, coffee bar on Friday nights, and there was James playing Bob Dylan songs with a big jumbo steel string, you know, that looked bigger than him. After the army, I mean, he just became Afrikaans. And then he eventually became, you know, the monster that we knew, which was Albert and Aldous himself. Like all the songs Jonathan writes are our songs. They belong to us, they belong to you, and they belong to me. So then we had a working studio, and we did Via Dolorosa. So that eventually came out in 91 as Big Beat. And by then, Fool Fred happened. There were a lot of people on that album, you know, James Phillips playing keyboards. Johannes Kerkel was even singing on that album, backing vocals. The Radio Rats, take it away! He is totally 100% original. He's completely doing his own thing. Padded rooms just about people they knew who had sort of gone a bit daft and ended up in padded rooms. That's the thing that made me realise that Jonathan wasn't your normal <laughs> songwriter. <laughs> What is a Radio Rat song? A Radio Rat song is a Jonathan Handley song when Dave Davies sings it. That's a Radio Rat song. It's like a very comfortable relationship with John. I just feel that it's a natural thing. If Dave doesn't like a song, then it's like taking a dog to the vet, eh? you know. If the dog knows the smell of the vet, you know when you get to the door, the dog doesn't want to go in. That's Dave. <laughs> you know, I've, I've often thought about this. Why didn't we become bigger and everything at the time? You've got to be dressed properly, you know, you've got to have the right sort of haircut and so on, which I don't think we ever fitted into the mould. I mean, we played mostly crap gigs. You couldn't empty the hall quicker if you'd shouted fire. The money's been mostly terrible. How much money have I made from music? Probably about four and twenty. But we've always enjoyed playing together and the music I think uh, says it all. Well, the first time I heard ZX Dan, I was in Standard 8. This song came on the radio and I thought, wow. And then all of a sudden, these acts are from Springs. And I remember, for some other reason, we looked down on these acts. What's in Springs? You know? Who would have thought that, like, years from there, I would meet these guys and like, play with them? What's the odds there? <laughs> There's Oakley writing fantastic songs. Every day is doing it. And that's, and that's a miracle for me in this country that there are still people that actually still care enough. I don't mind being a one-hit wonder. I think it's a, it's a great privilege to have had anything played on the radio.